Welcome back! Welcome back to Kenton and Habiba. Today we're gonna do a little story time, diary time. But first... It stopped raining. So, not too much. And then I roll it up, and that's my kind of, I don't know, maybe this is dinner? Nah, this is a late, late lunch. That's what this is, not dinner. Bon appetit, baby. <laughs> really good. And it's literally just eggs which I usually mix with a little milk. In this case, yeah, um, it was a little half and half and um, I sauteed some onions, some peppers, and a little bit of corn, some sweet corn, mixed that all up with some spice and um, some pepper jack cheese, <laughs> just a little, and this toasted tortilla, corn tortilla. Okay, so the last time I shared my diary with you guys, many of you were really excited. You wanted to hear more, um, but then some of you felt like, oh my God, I can't believe you're talking about the past. And you felt like it was too personal and that, you know, the past should be left in the past and I shouldn't talk about, you know, people that were in my past. Who I am today is shaped by my experiences like every one of us and also by the people that I was around. And so for me, it's very therapeutic to really look back at where I have come, um, not necessarily dwelling on the negative in the past, but I like to sometimes just look back at how far I've come. But anyway, I have decided to share more. My upbringing and, you know, coming from West Africa to the U.S. and what it was like as a young immigrant. I honestly have not read this diary since it was written back in 1988. As you may recall, I found this diary or my mom gave me this diary when I was in New York helping her move. Again, this was a diary I've had since 1988. It was a gift from my father. <laughs> this is this picture was definitely taken in late 1980s. So this should give you a little reference of what I looked like. So I believe I had just finished high school. Me and my ashy knees. I don't know why my knees were so ashy. I don't know what I was doing. But as you can see, I was quite thin or, well, I don't know if you would call me thin, but I was average build, right? Kind of average build to thinnish around the time this diary was written. <laughs> Versus dumpling me now. So my family, that is my mom and my brothers used to live in Brooklyn, New York. By that time, we had already moved to the U.S. Uh, my father was still in Nigeria. Um, yeah, and I think you can look back at previous vi videos to see why my parents were not together or why we were in the U.S. without him, etc. So I was supposed to have graduated from Barbizon in February. However, I was very sick with a chest cold and other complications that I had to take off one week of school. Wow. So for those that don't know, Barbizon was like a modeling school. And because I was new to the U.S., my mom really felt like I 
you know, lacked a lot of confidence. So she wanted me to have more confidence, more poise, just to be able to sort of blend in a little bit more. And so she invested in paying for uh, modeling school. So it, there was never any intention of me being a model. That was never the reason. It was just to build confidence. And I think, you know, when I look back that it was helpful because I learned a lot, not just about, you know, walking, learning to walk in heels. I mean, I, I used to walk in heels prior to that, but just about confidence and about applying makeup and about etiquette as a, you know, as a female and just, you know, how to carry yourself with confidence and navigate, you know, this world as a female. Because I think a lot of that is lost nowadays, you know. Uh, a lot of females, not all, but a lot of females are being raised to be very crude and very, I don't know, you know what I mean, right? Very crude and just vulgar and very unladylike and, um, that's never been my thing. Now, I know sometimes I do joke and sometimes I can be crude, maybe even. The Barbizon was a modeling school, so I was not able to attend the rehearsals for the graduation or the graduation itself. Therefore, I hope to graduate in May. So I was talking about this modeling school. I took pictures, but I am not yet to receive them. I know there's some of you thinking, well, you know, it's a very limited definition to think every female should be feminine. And you're right. I think that, you know, being a female does not necessarily mean being feminine all the time. There are some girls that are tomboys and that's quite okay. There are girls who don't like skirts or, you know, don't like high heels or don't like wearing makeup and all of those things. And that's fine to each his own. Uh, but I was always a very girly girl and uh, modeling school or fashion shows and wearing pretty dresses was just my thing. So just sharing. I'm not casting judgment on how you dress or how you look or how you raise your daughter. Hell, in fact, my daughter is really not interested in things like this half the time. <laughs> anyway, going to high school in Tilden, but then I had a program, this uh, program called Bridge to Medicine um, that I attended uh, several days a week. So it was a pre-med program basically for high school students that were interested in going to medical school. So it was in addition to my high school. I would go there and take college level classes and I made a lot of friends that are still friends of mine now. So Thursdays at Bridge to Medicine have been really great and educational. We have visited Harlem Museum, Museum of Natural History in Manhattan. People have come to perform traditional dances for us. Speakers from distinguished colleges like Cornell, Columbia, Vassar, etc. They had a cake sale, we had movies, etc. Last Thursday, which I missed, they went to see the human human brain. Oh, they went to see the human brain, that of a normal person and that of the AIDS victim. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Keep in mind back then AIDS was a big thing. You know, that was like the biggest, uh, devastating thing to hit the world. Um, so it was definitely a big thing of discussion. And then also keep in mind this, uh, program that I was attending was really designed for inner city kids. So a lot of the kids that attended the program usually came from poor families or, uh, you know, families where we didn't have much. So programs like this are incredibly important uh, because they allow kids from disadvantaged communities to be exposed to so many things that many of us could not afford or may have parents that are working, you know, single families, things like that. And I had definitely become one of those kids um, at that time. I think I have really learned a lot when I stop and think about it. We have finished reading the Odyssey and things fall apart. Anyone know things fall apart? That was written by Chingwe Achebe, who is a Nigerian author. So I'm sure I was really happy to see, you know, Nigeria represented all the way here in uh, America. And we now are reading the once and future king. 
The months of January and February were really busy. The trip to Wesleyan was so nice. I really fell in love with the small and so lovely environment. So yeah, Wesleyan was one of the colleges that uh, the program took us to. And a number of us from that program actually ended up going to Wesleyan. The people were so friendly. Sometimes I thought it might be fake. <laughs> there were so many parties, some of which I attended. Joy, now Joy was this Caribbean girl uh, that I met in Tilden. Um, yeah, little small Caribbean girl. And I don't know, we kind of had a rocky relationship at times. I don't know. Anyway, Joy, of course, never danced or participated in any. That's right. That's because I believe she was Jehovah's Witness. And that's something that was also very unfamiliar to me. She was a Jehovah's Witness. She used to wear long skirts and stockings and no makeup and was very conservative. So we uh, related because of our Caribbean background. But then for everything else, I'm not so sure. So Joy, of course, never danced or participated in any. However, she thoroughly enjoyed herself and has made up her mind to come to Wesleyan. That's right. After I had seen everything, I had pretty much made my mind that if I didn't get financial aid from Cornell, I was willing very happily to go to Wesleyan. Right. So Wesleyan was a smaller college. Um, however, Cornell, as you know, is an Ivy League. So of course, that's where I wanted to go. But it was also very, very expensive. And again, at the time, we really could not afford for me to go there. However, um, my, my thought process at the time is that I would go if I got financial aid. So before I got my acceptances and rejection, it was rather nerve wracking running from the mail or running to the mail each day to see if I had received any notices from any of the colleges. I went on several in interviews during the month of December and March. I saw a great part of the campus and took loads of pictures with new friends I made. I also got to walk or I also got to talk to quite a few of the faculty and current students in the college. Now that I am at home, I think I know where I'm going after a great deal of debate. Cornell. <laughs> I will just have to face it and give it a try. Mummy says I have no confidence in myself. Maybe I don't. We will see. And that's true. To be honest, at the time, I really didn't have enough confidence. I was very fearful of a lot of things. And again, I think it had a lot to do with my upbringing, um, you know, coming from Nigeria, coming to a place where I felt completely vulnerable, completely uh, sort of unprotected. Um, again, you know, in Nigeria, it was like we were very financially well off. Um, I've said this to people before who don't understand why I don't like to drive or why Kenton takes me everywhere. Well, because growing up, I had a chauffeur and I'm, I don't say this to show off. It just is what it is. Just like we had, um, you know, maids or, or houseboys, they used to call them, but that was not very rare or that's not something that is unusual in Nigeria, especially for someone of my father's background. So to come from that extreme to Brooklyn, New York, where we were living literally in my grandparents' basement and had like secondhand clothes that were donated at times and um, it was a struggle financially for my mom. And then when you go to high school and you're kind of, oh, you're the black girl that just got off the boat, so to speak, and you're different and you're weird. And you know, there was just, it was just a lot. So I really didn't have a lot of confidence. And even though I wanted to go to Cornell, I had also had like not only so-called advisors, but also people that I had worked for that happened to be white male that would tell me that I was wasting my time applying to Cornell and that, you know, um, you know, I needed to look around and see where I'm coming from and how could I possibly think I could get there. So the truth is, yes, I did not have a lot of confidence in that sense. Um, and so it's kind of weird though to read it, you know, that my mommy says I have no confidence in myself. Uh, it's kind of weird for me to read that now because now 
you know, 20, 30 years later, my mom thinks I'm a very confident person. And I know that I am a confident person <laughs> years later. So it's interesting to me to see where, you know, where you start and where you end up. Anyway, because I missed Friday the 15th and Thursday the 14th from the bridge, which again is the program I'm talking about, I missed quite a day, great deal of work from school, especially chemistry. On Monday, I have a chemistry quiz and I don't know half the stuff. I have an English paper due May 1st, which most people have nearly finished. I really don't know how I'm going to manage. Plus in June, which is not far, I have chemistry, physics, and English regents. So I can tell I was feeling very overwhelmed. Am I, uh, this was a question, am I strong enough emotionally and academically to cope with the amount of stress I am bound to encounter? I am even getting a free ride to Bernard. So that was, that was another, you know, uh, I believe all female college. So it appears that I might have gone to some party, but I'm trying to figure out if this was a party in college or a party while I was in high school. I'm not sure, but clearly it's that transition. And I, I have here at the first party called stepping out, stepping out party. I didn't feel like dancing or socializing. So I sat on a couch looking at people I knew dancing. A Haitian boy, <laughs> a Haitian boy stopped to talk to me and I found we were talking for ages and I was getting really tired, even though he was saying what he was saying was quite interesting. He was a foreign student who had had no calculus. His English was bad, uh, but he was very optimistic about coming to Cornell. He said, because I was scared of coming to Cornell, that is why I should take it up as a challenge and tackle it. At least try first, and if it doesn't work for me, then I could transfer. Any college would be more than glad to take a former Cornelian. Hmm, interesting. So I guess he was trying to give me advice. He must have felt really confident. Um, a few months later, I am to meet the same boy, Felix, at the summer program. Okay, I am shocked he doesn't talk to me for some days because I gave him the wrong number the first time I met him. I guess he asked for my number and I gave him the wrong number. So when he saw me again at Cornell, he didn't want to talk to me. <laughs> However, we soon became friends and talked it out. Okay. All right. Interesting. Everyone came from some top schools like Brooklyn Tech or private schools. They had SAT scores of 1200 and above. Some of them laughed when I told them I went to Tilden. Wow. So Tilden at that time in the eighties really had a bad reputation and the reason I ended up at Tilden was because of the neighborhood that my grandparents lived. It actually, in contrast to the first school that I had been put when we moved to the US and I was trying to get into school, they put me at Erasmus. And Erasmus, I don't know, my first impression was like, it looked like something I had seen in movies. It looked like a prison. It just was, it was scary. Again, keep in mind where I came from. So to go to a school like Erasmus in the 80s, there was like gun violence, there was like drugs, people were doing crack cocaine. You literally could see crack cocaine vials in the streets. So instead, we used a different relative's address to help me get to Tilden. But Tilden wasn't that much better. Now, for people that are much, much older, Tilden apparently used to be an all white school, uh, you know, back in the like 60s and 70s. But by the time the 80s came, it had been completely different. So anyway, it was almost like if you came from Tilden, people kind of looked down on you or, you know, didn't, didn't expect much. But of course, they didn't know my background. They didn't know that I didn't go to Tilden for all four, five, you know, four years of high school. I was only in Tilden for two years after I'd already finished high school in Nigeria. Um, yeah, when we moved, by the way, I had expected to go straight to college when we moved. But when I got here and uh, they told me that because I was 16, um, I was too young 
for American college and that it was going to be better for me to acclimate if I did two years of high school here. And also um, there were certain SAT requirements or things I hadn't you know, realized that I needed for college here that I needed to get done in, in high school. So I remember feeling devastated that I was being asked to go back to high school um, when I'd already finished high school you know, in Nigeria. But now in retrospect, it was definitely the best thing because there was so much uh, culturally and educationally that I had to learn in order to, you know, succeed in college. But again, the fact that I was coming from Tilden to some of the college kids at Cornell, it was like, what? How did you get here? <laughs> How did you get here coming from Tilden? <laughs> you know, for the American kids that knew better. There's this girl, I'll just say her name starts with K. This girl, K, came from a senior class of 40. So she came from like a small private school and there were 40 people in her class, unlike my class of 517. I kept thinking, these people must be so smart. I don't think I would want to be a student in any of their classes. The students in Cornell were very uh, informative. I also had a nice host. Oh, okay, so I think I'm talking about like um, prior to starting at Cornell or prior to starting college, you know, a lot of colleges will have like a pre-freshman summer or a weekend, especially for people of color, you know, a, a way to kind of come on campus and get to know the campus a little bit before you start. So that's really what was going on. Um, the students at Cornell were very smart and very informative. I had a nice host. Her name was LaShawn. She was a junior. Uh, Pre-med was supposed to be one of the hardest things to follow, really competitive. I think everything was just great. The beautiful campus, the food, the people, everything except maybe me. By the end of the day, I was very skeptical about going to Cornell. I guess I was scared. I am still am. So I just want to say that uh, I hope this doesn't trigger anyone, but okay, let me just read it. So again, I'm a high school student. Today is the 24th of May, 1988, Tuesday. So much has happened during this past few weeks, full stop. On the 10th of May, I had an English final. That was okay, and I made out with a 92%. And on the 11th and 12th, I had a math and chemistry test, respectively, full stop. And I know I did pretty awful. <laughs> it was a great relief to get down, to get done and over with the finals, full stop. I couldn't believe this was the end of the bridge to medicine, full stop. On the 12th of May, so again, this was a program that I actually really enjoyed, even though it was very, um, what's the word? It was very challenging. Uh, it definitely helped me grow and definitely helped my application to Cornell, full stop. On the 12th of May, on the day I had my chemistry final, a boy hanged himself upstairs above our classroom. Full stop. It was really depressing and a shocking day. Essie and Tamika went upstairs to find a place to study before the final. This was about 11.30 a.m. They walked into the class and saw this boy hanging from the ceiling. Full stop. At first it looked like a joke and then they realized he was dead and ran downstairs to tell Dr. Garland, our chemistry teacher. Full stop. She didn't believe them, telling them to stop playing, but she was later persuaded to go upstairs where she saw the body and aided in taking it down. Full stop. For the rest of the day, there was so many reporters, police, etc. The boy, it turns out, was from the other program. So we had several programs in this college, and it turned out that the boy was from another program here in City College. He was Hispanic and he was only 15 years old. Ugh. I don't know, man. It was later apparent that he had been in some satanic cult. Oh my God, that's so weird. So weird. And again, I was in high school, so it's a lot, it's, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot. Then here I went on a trip to Washington, D.C. 
Oh, this was, again, with the program, they would help us go to different places. Sure. But I shall attempt to inform you all that what has happened starting from today and going backwards to December 87. Okay. I returned from one of the most... So this is a new paragraph. I returned from one of the most extraordinary trips I have ever been on. I think I really had a nice time. However, when it comes to asking myself if I wanted to go to Cornell, it was just too frightening. The trip was a five hour journey during which we encountered all four seasons as we moved from New York to Ithaca. So for those that don't know, Ithaca uh, or where the Cornell campus is was upstate New York. So it's kind of high up mountains, Kind of like the environment that you saw where Bashir was, but just in a different area. Uh, Sunday, there was rain, snow, and wind. The scenes surrounding us were so beautiful, especially as we got closer to Ithaca. Mountains, forests, grass, hills, farms, gardens, large isolated houses, etc. The first day we spent at Cornell was, for me, the most frightening. <laughs> the school was so, so large, enormous. The students sounded so intelligent, <laughs> so crazy. I mean, you know, I'm sure there are times now where I go to places and I'm completely impressed, but it's just funny to me now looking back to think how timid and how insecure I was and how God is good to be able to have had a hand in my transformation. Um, anyway, from the 14th Wednesday to 17th Sunday, to Wesleyan in Connecticut. Both trips were great. I have so much to say and recall that I don't know where to begin. Okay, before I went on both trips, I got my acceptance letters from three of the five colleges I applied, Wesleyan, Cornell, and Brooklyn College. I got a rejection for Columbia from Columbia University. I wasn't really upset about not getting there. It was my third choice. However, it certainly upset my pride having to see a letter of rejection. <laughs> anyway, after the trip, you know what's interesting? I got a segue here. What's interesting is after college, by the way, that, that rejection must have really bothered me because after college, I actually applied to a post back program in Columbia, which is in New York City, and I actually got in. So I guess the moral of the story is just because you get rejected, um, doesn't mean you can't try again. It really doesn't mean you can't try again because you never know. So I didn't end up going to that Columbia uh, program because I wanted to go and stay in California with my then boyfriend, i.e. my now husband, Kenton. <laughs> so that's why I didn't end up going to Columbia. Anyway, after the trip to Wesleyan, I also received an acceptance to Stony Brook, which was one of the most competitive SUNY colleges. I was really surprised and still am after all the difficulties and doubts I have had along the way. Full stop. I still haven't gotten a green card yet. Wow. This was all happening before my green card? Wow. I, I still haven't gotten a green card yet, but with mummy's courage and optimism, we have somehow managed to bluff our way through. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. By the way, just so you know, we legally did get our green card eventually, many, many years ago. And then um, years after that, you know, we applied for American citizenship, which I have now. So uh, we are all here legally, <laughs> just so you know. But apparently there was a window <laughs> where things were quite uh, shaky. Let's put it that way. Anyway, Wesleyan has promised me a pre pre preliminary financial aid package based on my mother's income alone, since it is not possible to get, since it is not possible to get, why did I go backwards? Can you believe this is the first time I am writing in this diary after I received it in 19, in December 87? Well, I guess you are wondering what prompted me. Oh, I kind of went backwards. That's so weird. All right, I'm sorry, y'all. So, yeah, I kind of went backwards. I don't know why I did that. Today was not bad. However, my mind was very unsettled. 
I kept worrying about chemistry quiz tomorrow and especially my English paper due May 1st. Woke up after 10 a.m., mummy made breakfast. We or I talked and talked about Cornell, full stop. At 12 p.m., Omar and I went to Avenue D to get some vegetable and hair products. Auntie Mona was there with Marlene. I tried, <laughs> full stop. I tried to do some chemistry studying and completed my uh, homework. I really can't wait to finish school, Tilden and the bridge. The absence of my green card. Oh, okay, now it makes sense. The absence of my green card is also worrying me in terms of going to college. Yes, you cannot go to college in, Amer in America without a green card. Okay, so that makes sense. So I really encourage you to start writing a journal if you've never done that before or writing a diary. I find it incredibly therapeutic and I just feel like it's such a gem to be able to look back, you know, now in my adult life, to be able to look back at my thoughts when I was a teenager, literally. So for example, Khalid now is, you know, in Maryland, he works for the NIH, but he's also uh, studying for the MCAT. Um, so he plans to go to medical school and uh, he also does a lot of volunteer work. But sometimes he'll call us and he'll say, oh my God, I had this amazing experience or I felt so humbled volunteering in this or that capacity, you know, dealing with uh, populations that he's not accustomed to. And I always tell him, you know, go ahead and just start writing a diary. Just pick up a, a, a book or a journal and just start writing your thoughts. You just don't know where it will take you and how you're going to feel about some of those things, those experiences when you look back, you know, in your adult life, when you look back when you're a grown man with kids. And so it's the same for me. I feel like honestly, when I was, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18, I could not imagine what my life would be like now. And um, it's just, I don't know. I just thank God. I, I definitely thank God for the journey and again some of it has been quite troubling but the majority of my life has been quite magical if I am being honest. Um, I now have a wonderful husband, three kids, I've had you know a career in medicine and now I'm choosing to do something completely different <laughs> but medicine's still there. Uh, we'll see where it, we'll see where life goes. I have no idea. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to me. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment some of your thoughts, what you liked or didn't like. And uh, I will see you soon because I got a lot in here. And I have a ton of journals. <laughs> this is just one from 88, but I have a ton of journals that I've written through the years.